Hey guys, Rachel's here. Welcome back to Pencil Stash. Today, we are not going to be coloring in a coloring book. Instead, we are going to be coloring in my planner. And I don't know if I've ever told you guys this, but I'm a big fan of like having a to-do list. It's just kind of makes me feel productive. And you know, if you're not uh, kind of keeping track of some of that stuff and you know ticking it off as you go it definitely gets lost in all of the shuffle so i like to have a bit of a planner just a very simple one um and in the past i've looked for like off the shelf planners and i've never really found one that worked for what i needed it to i needed a little bit more custom view and so i always ended up making them instead of buying them and so over the years I've bought um, just, you know, like the A5 books um, from Michaels or from Amazon and they usually have like the dotted um, paper in there and the paper is usually never very good quality. Um, so I usually decorate it with like stickers that I design myself or, you know, kind of off the shelf stuff. Um, but it's always a very custom spread. Um, but I started 2020 with an Erin Condren planner and I just hated it. Didn't work for me, like barely used it, you know, tossed it out. And then March pandemic time frame kind of hit and I stopped using a planner almost altogether because plans were like a thing of the past. Um, but now kind of getting, you know, back into, you know, the swing of things and I want a planner again. So I went to Michael's and I was looking at kind of the A5 kind of standard ones, but this caught my eye. This is a little bit of a shorter one because I'm only doing it through the end of the year. So I didn't need a ton of pages and I love the larger size. It just allows for a bit more surface area for me to do my spreads on. And it's a sketchbook. So the paper in here is actually really, really nice feeling. And I thought that it would take colored pencil much better than that kind of crappy, you know, dotted A5 stuff would. So I thought it'd be fun to do a planner and draw it out myself. So that's exactly what I did. I kind of looked on the internet for some inspiration and I found somebody on Etsy that um, actually sells like printable planners and I absolutely fell in love with her stuff. It's uh, Etsy Handle Blush and May. I'll leave a link to it down in the description. Um, but since I wanted it in here, I just sort of took, um, you know, a little bit of liberty and uh, just kind of drew in, you know, a bit of a version of what she did um, right into my planner. And this is the monthly spread. And you'll notice I don't start my weekends on Sunday. I like to start my like the beginning of my week view on Saturday. So it's kind of Saturday, Sunday, you know, and then the rest of the week. Um, so this is my monthly view. So I'll start kind of filling this out as I have it. This will be really fun to color. I'm looking forward to this one. And then I have a weekly spread um, for each week thereafter. So this is October 3rd through the 9th. This is all of my kind of to-do spots. I'll either cross them off or kind of do a little checkbox in here. I'm not quite sure how I'm going to use that yet. And then this is my meal plan page. This is sort of where I'm going to start, you know, I grocery shop on Saturday, um, you know, so it'll be Saturday through Friday, you know, seven meals. It'll either be stuff I plan or left overnight or eating out night, you know, whatever it is. But I don't like to say like on Tuesday, I'm eating this. I don't, you know, like... I'm not that rigid with my schedule. So that's why I have them numbered instead of days because to me it doesn't really matter. So I have a weekly spread for each of the weeks throughout the end of October. And then I have a workout page that I kind of put together. I just wanted to kind of have some goals here. I like to run, I like to walk, I like to cycle. Um, so I wanted to make sure that I was doing something at least every single day, whether it's you know, one of those three or playing tennis or something. So I just kind of wanted to put some goals together, have some weekly, you know, tracking spots and then kind of see where I finish out with this little result square. And then this page, I purposely left it blank because I wanted to show you guys how I do this, how I end up with this, because I don't just freehand, you know, squares. Um, so I'm going to show you how I do that. And I think this one's going to be like an October goals page. I'm not in entirely sure yet. I have some thoughts, but they're not fully baked. Um, but then after I show you guys that, I thought we would go back in and color some of these October spreads. I think it would be really fun to kind of add some color here and really bring these to life with our colored pencils. Um, so 
just real quick, um, this book here, this was about $6.99, which is absolutely a steal. Um, so, you know, you can, you can do this very, very inexpensively. And I have a couple of um, things here that I like to use. I like to use a see-through ruler that is fairly wide. This is uh, six, uh, five inches wide and uh, 12 inches long. And I bought this at a quilting store. Um, so I've used this for quilting in the past, but I love using it for this kind of thing as well. I have a stencil for a bunch of circles. I don't know why there's paint on it. Don't ask. Um, <laughs> and then I have a Pentel eraser. I love this thing. Um, I have a Pentel uh, fine liner and then a just regular old Bic mechanical pencil. So I think we're going to put some thoughts into our spread. Uh, and then we'll color this and I'm gonna take you guys along with me. All right, so I changed my mind a little bit and I think I, instead of doing like a goals page on this blank one, I think I'd rather capture like a couple of things from my life in this month, because I actually save all of my bullet journals as a little bit of kind of, they're not a diary, because I don't actually, you know, write like dialogue in here, but in terms of like, maybe it'd be cool to capture like what I'm into. Uh, right now, this little snapshot in time, this would kind of be fun to look back on in, in a few years and just kind of figure out, you know, what the heck I was doing in October of 2020. So I think I'm going to follow kind of the same format where I've already drawn a line in here, which is sort of where I'm starting a lot of these pages just so that they are nice and consistent. And the nice thing is that like, if you want to, you know, like as you, as you do a month, like you don't have to do all of the months all at once. You can do just October and then you can kind of see how these spreads work for you. And if they don't work for you and you need to make some tweaks, you can do November a little bit differently, kind of based on, you know, what you learned from, you know, using it for 31 days. So I think that's what we'll do. And let's see, I'm, I usually save the words for last. Um, but I think, again, I'd like to capture, you know, a couple of things about um, just kind of, you know, what I'm, what I'm doing right now. So I took some inspiration from something I found on Pinterest and I'm going to do little squares kind of similar to these, but bigger. And I'm going to do like what I'm loving, what I'm eating, what I'm thinking, where I'm going, stuff I'm making, maybe like a book I'm reading right now. And I'm just going to, you know, fill in, you know, little, little squares, um, just to kind of capture each one of those things. So First thing I'm going to do is, let's see, I want three wide, like my inspiration photo has. I'll try to leave a link to this as well. Um, so I'm going to figure out the math on how to center uh, my first square, um, just so that I am not off kilter, because I'm a little off kilter on this one, and I wouldn't say it drives me crazy, but it doesn't bring me joy. <laughs> So I would rather be a little bit more uh, intentional. Um, so I'm gonna try to find the center here and then we will go from there. And I'll make them three across and four down if I have room. All right, so I found my center and I just kind of marked it. And the one thing that I love about a clear ruler is that instead of just kind of lining it up there and then thinking that you're straight, uh, the thing about this is that it has all these lines, it has all these angles and you can put one of these lines over top of one of the ones that you've already done so that you know that your line will always be perpendicular to the ones that you've already made and then you will always have straight lines. So I am just going to put a mark down the middle of my page here and now I'm going to do an inch on either side of it because I think I want my my blocks about two inches wide. That's what my math tells me I can have. And then I'll do the same on the other side. And I like to flip my book so that my uh, ruler isn't resting on here because it might get a little bit wonky, but sometimes it has to be. So here's my main square. I know I have a line down the middle of it. That'll go away. And then I made a little spacer line. And then this next one's also going to be two inches. So I'm just going to go two inches over here. I'm gonna line it up with this line two inches over. And you don't have to press too hard with your pencil because we're gonna erase these lines later. 
So it's just one of those, um, you know, guidelines that we are going to use just to make sure that we are nice and straight. And then we'll go over it with our fine liner and erase the rest. All right, so now we have three columns. And now I can start kind of establishing my squares downward. And again, I want four. So here's this rectangle, here's a rectangle, and we'll continue to go down. Now we're going to take our fine liner, and you can use a Sharpie, you can use a Micron pen. I have those, um, but I also really like this Pentel um, Energel. It's a 0 0.5 um, millimeter ball black pen, pretty much. Um, and I really like this. It uh, will hold up really nicely uh, to erasing right over it. It dries really, really quickly, and it doesn't show through on the other side of my paper. Um, and the Sharpie was doing that just a little bit on my test page. So I wanted to use this one just because I don't want to see my work on the other side. Um, so we're going to use this. And again, each of these squares is going to be an opportunity to uh, showcase something in my life. So I'm going to take a nod from my inspiration photo and just kind of put in some words here down at the bottom along the very bottom of each of the squares. Loving, eating, thinking. Uh-oh. This one will be interesting. I'm always terrified I'm going to spell something wrong and I'm going to have to live with it. All right, so I have words kind of down at the bottom, and instead I'm just going to kind of do my squares very similarly to what I've done before with these little kind of uh, dots and dashes, and I'm going to work around the words. So the words are sort of going to be sort of hovering in between here. So like, for example, I'm just going to follow along these lines, and then I might put a little dot before I fill out the rest of my square. It is helpful to have a very steady hand for this. All right, all of my squares are done, and I still have all of my pencil lines, and I'm gonna leave those for now. Um, I also drew a line down here at the bottom, cause I think just to bring a little bit of kind of fun and whimsy and kind of carry through some of these like little leaf uh, and flower motifs that I've been doing, I think I'm gonna do kind of a line uh, of them down here at the bottom. So what I like to do is just kind of draw in some short shapes. And I'm going to try to keep them relatively away from here just to give them a little bit of breathing room. And this one's really easy. This one is just, let me zoom in for you guys. Just a little line. And then I like to do like a little teardrop shape at the top. And then I just kind of build off of that. And I like to have my shapes kind of varied. Then I'll do one kind of coming up off of here. And I'm just going to kind of go down the line. All right. And now the nice thing about this is that if you kind of drew something that you're not quite a fan of, like this one's a little wonky, when you're doing your liner, you don't have to follow the lines exactly you can kind of, you know, tweak as you go. So like, for example, with this one, I think I might kind of do something more like this. There we go. Close enough. And then you just go over these just like you did your other lines until you're happy. All right, so on top of these lines here, I just kind of drew in some guardrails for my words so that I would know where to kind of, you know, have the top of the word and the bottom of the word, just to have, you know, a swim lane to kind of stay in. And I think I am gonna follow um, that kind of scripty currently and then happening in life I'm gonna do over here in a little bit of a different um, kind of blocky way. So now I just have to write out currently in scripty font that kind of mirrors what I did over here. So let's see. Let's see how that's going to look. All right, so that looks like crap, but that's okay because I just need it to be just enough for me to outline. So that's what my October looked like as well. 
when I did it before. So I just kind of wrote it out really badly and then I used my fine liner to just kind of go over it and just kind of fill it out better. Um, this is just sort of the skeletal structure and yes, it looks like crap, but we're gonna fix that. So now I'm gonna sort of go around it so that we are creating a bubble of um, words. So I'll kind of show you what I mean here. And once in a while I do stop and kind of do my little dots. So that's kind of my outline. But now I'm going to sort of create a little bubble so that it's very kind of filled out. Now we have all of these pencil lines and I think I want to get rid of them. And I'm just going to take my eraser and I'm just going to start erasing. Now the thing is like you don't want to just do this, uh, you know, you might crumple your paper. So just do me a favor and just kind of hold on to it when you're doing it so that um, like your paper doesn't slide and then it gets wrinkled and mangled and that's not cute. And, this and it's actually, let's do it down here because this is where it's really, you can kind of see what I mean. All right, I'm going to do the whole page. All right, having this blank space here kind of felt a little bit empty. So I just drew in a pencil line kind of halfway between these two things. And I'm just maybe going to draw in some of my little uh, foliage just to have a little bit more to add some color to. And I'll show you how I do these leaves. Um, basically, I just take whatever size um, circle that I want to have. And I'm going to do a relatively small one just because I want this line to be small. So I'm just going to take this little guy right here and I'm just gonna make a circle and then what I do is I just use the circle as a little bit of a guide to make a little bit of like an apple butt down at the bottom and then I make like a spear at the top and then shape like that still kind of using that and then I just kinda of do a little tail once I have it I can go in with my liner and finish her off. All right, super cute, I love it. Now I'll erase this as well and we'll be done with this page. All right, so I really wanna color this one. This one's obviously the fun one and the opportunity to kind of have a little bit of fun. So I've pulled a couple of colors that I think I'm going to end up using. These are some of my favorites. Obviously, some of them are ridiculously short. Um, so I think that we will be kind of picking from this palette to do the entire page. So I think, you know, again, in terms of the design, I could have done Halloween or pumpkins or something for October, but I didn't want to do anything that like typical. So I decided to do something a little bit different, even though it still kind of has a little bit of a fall theme with some of the leaves here. And I think that our sort of more like fun and muted sort of folk artsy kind of color palette will help to just kind of differentiate it as well. So I think the first thing I'm going to do just to kind of put some color on the page to start us off is get some orange into our October up here. And it'll also be a really good opportunity just to kind of see how the pencils do in this paper. I haven't actually tested how the colored pencils will sort of do on this paper. So I am anxious to find out. And I think what I'm going to do, just in terms of like how I'm actually going to color this, is just sort of switch back and forth here as I go between mineral orange and pumpkin orange. And I'll tell you guys, I am not like a hand lettering expert by any means. You could tell from the uh, uh, word currently that we did on the other page, but I'm really proud of this. Like this maybe could have been a little bit bigger right here. The O maybe could have been a little bit further off, but like for some reason, I love how the B, the E and the R came out. Oh my God. I could not have asked for that to uh, come out any better. I was very happy with that. Uh, even if it's only three letters out of the word, I am very happy with them. I'll take it. The only thing I am noticing as I do this is that there is a little bit of like an indentation from where my original pencil line was on the paper. So I think it crushed the tooth of the page um, a little bit. Um, so I do see like a little bit of like a white 
um, sort of valley where the pencil was. So it's not a deal killer, it's not super obvious. Um, and, you know, there are worse things happening in the world right now. Um, but uh, that is the only thing that I am noticing. All right, my letters are done, and I am happy to report that I actually blended it with the colorless blender, and it sort of blended out those little valleys of, um, of pencil marks. Um, there's a couple little spots that were kind of hard to do, but for the most part, this kind of got it out, and I've got kind of my two-toned, you know, gradient October. Uh, so now we're going to move over to the fun part. And of course, I see another little pencil line. I'm just going to keep finding those. It's just going to be a thing. So here's where I can have a little bit of fun. And I think I'm going to start on the owl. I really want him to be this really cool blue color. Sort of head and then her body area. I think I'm going to do an even lighter color over her face and tummy. So we'll just lay this down real quick. All right, so that is muted turquoise. Now I'm going to go in with slate. And this is a just darker version of this blue and I'm just going to go in into some of the areas that might be a little bit shaded and I'm just going to add just a little bit and I'm not I'm, I'm purposely not shading this very much just because I don't want to overdo it on here I think it's going to be really really cute just kind of leaving it very very simple not overthinking it but yeah, just keeping it a little bit simple, a little bit kind of cartoonish. It's going to be super cute. All right, our little owl is blended. And I think I will just go in with a little bit of dark umber. And I'm just going to give him just a lead, or her. I think it's a girl. She's cute. Um, just going to give her just a little bit of shadow under her neck here. The other fun thing that I think I'm going to do... I love this gold chocola metallic marker and I'm kind of tempted to add this in as well. Like I kind of want to do it on these branches here, have these be like the little end tips. I kind of originally was going to be doing that in blue, but maybe I'll do this in blue and this in blue and just to kind of help spread it across the page. But these I'll do in this gold. I think that would be awesome. I am going to test it out. Oh, I see more pencil marks. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> All right. Let's just kind of test it out on this little guy here because we can always... Yeah. Okay. That is awesome. Okay. So we'll do that on all of these little ends here. And I'm actually, I think, more excited about using this on these because I have these on other pages. Like on that page that we just did, they're all along that bottom portion. And I think it'll look really cool with the gold and it'll really just kind of help that page stand out because there wasn't too much going on on that page um, in terms of like being able to color. So having the metallic marker might make that just a little bit more interesting than it would have been if it was just a color. This is so stinking cute. I love it. Uh, now I'm going to introduce a new color. This is ginger root. And I'm just going to do the mushroom top and base with this. And then we'll come back in and further embellish it. All right. I think one more little... Kind of surprise and I always had this plan from the beginning but I didn't want to draw it in in pencil because I want it to be really light and subtle I think I'm gonna take these two colors this is sky blue yep sky blue light and Caribbean sea and I think I want to draw in some like wind lines um, to sort of help just kind of sell the fact that these little leaves and stuff are sort of getting you know, cycloned around our cute little owl. So I think I'm going to take this one, especially just because it's lighter and just feels not as permanent. <laughs> I am going to go... Oh my gosh, that's so cute. Okay. Phew! That is adorable. I have to say that was kind of nerve-wracking because if you, you know, maybe mess up something or, you know, something doesn't kind of come out the way that you wanted to on a coloring page, you can just close the book, put the book away, and never look at it again. I'm going to be using this and looking at it all the time 
So I really wanted to make sure that it was something that I was going to be like super happy to see every day and that it was going to like just fill me with joy. This is so cute. I love it. So yeah, my weekends are blue. My weekdays are green. I don't think I need to add the Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. I think that, you know, this layout just kind of will help me imply all of that. Um, so I think we're good here. I think I'm going to leave our cute little owl belly and stomach white. And this is absolutely my favorite part. It's so, so cute. All right, I think I'm done. I did the kind of monthly spread here. And then I did all of the task pages and the meal plan pages. I purposely didn't do the little kind of to do task dots just because I think if I have, you know, a couple things on here, it'll be busy enough. And I just, I just want to be able to easily and quickly see what I have going on. And I didn't want to kind of clutter this section up, but I did color the little circles for the meal plan pages and I did the um, words and the meal plan up here in the same colors on each page um, but I did kind of change up you know exactly what the um, things were so I just also kind of changed up the colors a little bit so these are all relatively repetitive um, the weekly spread but super fun to color and then over here I colored the currently happening in life. I'm kind of deciding like, do I fill this out at the beginning of the month, at the end of the month? Do I kind of fill it out as I go? I don't know how I'm gonna use this. This is a brand new kind of spread in a journal for me, so this should be kind of fun. And then my workouts. I haven't put any in yet. I definitely have been walking my dog a lot. I definitely need to get running more. Uh, I will definitely have to get used to uh, filling these things out, but it should be pretty easy to kind of work into my routine. And then after this, I think I'm just going to start on this page as my November spread and um, sort of, you know, fill in the rest of the weekly spreads as I go. So I hope that you enjoyed this uh, kind of coloring with me. It's a little bit kind of non-traditional and we certainly didn't use a coloring book but we used our colored pencils and it was creative and I definitely enjoyed it and this is something that I plan on using every single day so I hope that you enjoyed it as well if you have any plans to do this or you already do it yourself and have some suggestions I'd love to hear from you down in the comments if you enjoyed it please hit the thumbs up button it helps me tremendously and subscribe if you're new Share with a friend if you uh, think that there's someone in your life that would enjoy this video. And I will see you guys next time. Thanks so much for watching. Happy coloring. Bye.